greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know why I'm so nervous this morning. Maybe because my handsome husband is next to me. <laughs> um, we would like to thank the leadership of this house for giving us the opportunity to share our testimony with you today. It's an honor for us to stand here today and testify of God's grace, mercy, and goodness. Well, morning, church. I'm glad that I still make my wife nervous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so just some background context about myself and the reason why we're standing here today. Um, so I gave my heart to the Lord about 12 years ago. Coming from a strong Hindu background, it was kind of difficult. Um, you know, I'm more of a realistic person. I want to see, I want to feel, I want to touch. Um, you know, when you hear the phrase, have faith, it was very hard for me to sort of understand and adapt to it. For some of you, uh, you may have heard amongst the corridors a portion of my testimony, uh, but I think today it's all honor to God that we give you the full version of his grace, mercy, and goodness that he has over our lives. In November, November 2023, I fell ill. I visited a doctor, and all he told me was it was a bladder infection, and he sent me home with some medication. A week later, it got even worse been back to the doctor and he referred me to a urologist. During the x-rays it was discovered that half my right kidney was not visible anymore. So the urologist said, okay, it could be many things. It could be an infection, could be a bleed, uh, it could be kidney stones. So I was then admitted into hospital, run various tests, and I was being treated for kidney stones. In and out of hospital over the last test, and the neurologist said, sorry, it's not kidney stones anymore. We need to do a biopsy and see what is going on. After the biopsy and the CT and the MRI, I was called in by the neurologist and he said, sir, unfortunately, we have a much more serious case on hand. So it was discovered that I had a large tumor just over four centimeters in my right kidney. Uh, but adding to that, the biopsy results indicated that it was already at stage one cancer. So various tests followed to see if it had infect infected any various other organs. Immediately after this, fear crept in. We panicked. Questions such as how serious is this? How long do I have to live? What happens to my family? Where do they live? as we are currently renting a flat. How do I ensure that they are seen to in the event of my death? That is when reality kicked in. And this made me think in terms of how real it is and how granted I took life. We then called our pastors and we notify them of our situation. Although we were being prayed for, fear and reality was still creeping in. During this time, our faith was really being tested. We knew we should have been trusting that God had a plan. However, in my mind, that was not the case. We prayed, we fasted, sowed seeds for positive outcomes and for a home. This not only affected me personally, but my family too. Their faith was also being tested. Throughout this process, they have been supportive and encouraging me that no matter what may happen, God has a plan. I recall Vanessa telling me all the time that after this challenge, there is a great breakthrough. It was hard for me to believe at the time. At the beginning of December 2023, the final pathology reports came back. There was no other solution but then removing my right kidney surgically. My doctor explained the process and told me that it's going to be a long road to recovery. The surgical procedure he had described and explained to me scared me even more. As he had explained that he would have to cut me about 32 centimeters on my right abdomen, break my rib, and then try to get to the infected kidney. After hearing this, I thought it was rather better to keep the infected kidney and take a chance with life. 
However, Vanessa had kept on, kept on reminding me that we should pray and trust God. A few days later, my doctor called and said that he has a better solution for me. He had reached out to one of his colleagues about my situation. The colleague had suggest, suggested robotic surgery, which is less invasive and has a faster recovery. However, my doctor was not a specialist in this area. But then God worked in his mind. God had worked in this robotic surgeon's heart because he had then agreed to do the procedure. So after agreeing to this procedure, we fasted, we prayed, and we sowed many seeds. And when I say many seeds, guys, many seeds, because for every little process that we had to follow, we sowed a seed for. On the 15th of December, 2023, I was scheduled for my procedure. The day dragged, the procedure was being delayed, but obviously I think it was God's plan. Finally, around 2 p.m., I was taken into surgery. The procedure took a few hours. The next day, I was in a lot of pain, and the doctor had given us feedback that the surgery went well. However, there was spreading in the pelvis area, where they had removed the infected kidney. The doctor was very positive that everything went well, and all he did was schedule me to receive a whole lot of antibiotics every hour. On day two, with God's mercy, I was able to get out of bed on my own, take baby steps, and get around the ward. The doctors and nurses were astonished. They were shocked at the fact that I could be on my feet and walking around the ward. They told me that normally a person that goes through this kind of procedure lays in bed for seven to eight days before they can get up on their feet. They could not believe that I was able to walk and this was only possible because of God. Yes. Day three, doctor visited me in the ward, did some checks and discharged me. All he had prescribed for me was a box of panados. I had asked him, but what about the antibiotics? What about the treatment for my surgical wounds? What about chemo? Because obviously he said there was cancers being spread around the pelvis area. He told me, no, all you get is a box of Panado, go home, and I'll see you in eight days' time. Christmas went by for us. I was feeling much better. It was time for my next visit. Doctor had received the final results after we had sent the kidney back for testing. He was shocked at the results, and he indicated that at that stage, I was already at stage three cancer. He found it hard to believe that this was the case and how I could have been living with this for just over a year. The doctor then told me that he will see me in six months time to ask various tests and then schedule the next level of treatment. February 2024. Vanessa and I decided to take a leap of faith, not knowing what my medical results would be in the future. We had decided to look for a new home. Both Vanessa and I did not have acceptable credit records. We could not qualify for any financial loans. There were many challenges. I felt that was impossible at this time. Fear, stress, anxiety all kicked in at this stage. We asked ourselves what to do next. Vanessa just told me, give it all to God and don't do this on your own strength. It was hard for me because as I said, I'm a realistic person. I want to do things, I want to feel things, I want to see things for myself. But it had to be done. It reminded me of a scripture, Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In March 2024, we started window shopping for a new home. At this stage, we were not credit worthy. We took a leap of faith, and we were still trusting God to come through, irrespective of our circumstances. Faith, prayer, fasting, and sowing into the kingdom goes a long way. I am a living testimony of what God is capable of. God has answered our prayers. 
and this is how he did it for us. Middle of March 2024, God made it possible for us to settle our debt. When I say debt, everything, zero. We then proceeded to do a pre-approval bond application to see if we would qualify for a home. Sadly, we were turned on by all the major banks. At this stage, I felt very despondent, and the only thing that I could leave to my family was my pension fund. Vanessa at this stage did not give up, and she kept on pushing me. I recall when we went to revisit the last property uh, with the agent, and this property was not suitable for us at all. I recall telling Vanessa, what's the point? We are viewing all these properties, but no bank will finance us. As we left the property, I got a notification on my phone from Property 2024. And the adver advertisement was exactly what we were looking for. We had asked the agent to please make a viewing appointment. However, she was unsuccessful. On our way home, Vanessa said, you call the agent and you make a personal viewing with the individual. I recall on March 23rd, we secured a viewing. The agent had told us that there were many viewings and there were many interested buyers. When we entered the property, we just knew that was home. God would have not led us to that property without having a plan. Although we were aware that we would not be financed, we decided to sign the offer of purchase in faith. <laughs> As I completed this application and placed my final signature on the document, the agent had received a call with a cash proposal for the property. The agent responded and said, sorry, I cannot accept the cash offer as an OTP has just been signed. Once again, God came through for us. Knowing that no bank will finance us, we decided to sow a seed for the bond. A week later, we reapplied for a bond. This was all done in faith. One of the banks had come back to us and saying they will grant us a bond if we paid a deposit. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't have 200, 300,000 laying in my bank account. <laughs> but it's a deposit that we do not have. April 2024. You know, in, when you sign an OTP, you got 30 days to finalize your purchase. April 2024, God made that possible. We were able to pay the deposit and the bond was granted. Amen. June 2024, I was back at the doctor for my six months checkup. All stressed up, all fearful, as this test results would have then determined the future for my family and I. I conducted the test not knowing what the results would be. On the 11th of June, I did my tests. On the 11th of June, the evening, I got my results back. When I visited the doctor, he was astonished. Because there was no cancer Hallelujah. in my body. Hallelujah. We then shared the good news with our friends, family, and our pastors. And the goodness of God did not end there. On the 8th of August, a few days ago, we received the keys to our new home. Yay. We are now ready for the next chapter in our lives. Yay. I have no words to express my gratitude and thanks to God Almighty who has turned, not my life, but my family's life around in the past eight months. With God, with God, even the impossible becomes possible. If God can turn things around for us, he will certainly do it for you. This morning, we would just like to thank the pastors of this house, the church who supported us, who prayed for us throughout the season. A special thanks to Pastor Malcolm and Charmaine, who gave us the special attention we needed. We would like to thank all our family and friends who prayed and supported us. 
I would like to thank my beautiful wife, Vanessa, who stood by me, who encouraged me, who took care of me, who never gave up on me. Thank you, babe. I love and appreciate you. <laughs> to my girls, Chelsea and Danley, it was not easy for them either. But they stood strong, they prayed, and they supported us. To them, I love them to bits. May our testimony encourage you to trust God for his goodness, his grace, and his mercy over your lives. Amen. Thank you.